It's alive! <laughs> it's smoking. It's, alive. it's running rich! I was thinking my window was up, but no, that's smoke. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Hang on. It's not official yet. But I have to drink a beer? Here. Give me a beer. It's the only one left. Well, then we got a chair. The fridge is empty. Cheers. 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 Calvin, you want to slurp? Sure. Cheers. Bitter <laughs> 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 beer face. <laughs> That's <laughs> gross. <laughs> How do you guys drink that? Cheers. That is See, refreshing. You got to. No wonder you hated college. <laughs> All right, guys, as you just saw, we got the truck running. We've been kind of knocking a bunch of stuff out off camera, doing a lot of the boring stuff that really isn't fun to watch, like uh, wiring underneath the dash. I'll show some of that more in detail, but I figured you guys probably wouldn't enjoy watching me uh, rise around underneath the dash for 20 minutes so we're just gonna kind of skip over that we uh, also put in the brake lines yep and the master cylinder and the brake pedal and uh, mom got to install her Christmas present which was a uh, line lock solenoid so I guess we'll jump to detail shots so let's go to that there That's we enough. go all right, so starting with the engine bay, you'll notice that we got the headers installed. We got all of the wiring done. We have our radiator installed. We painted that black, and we're using a Ford Taurus cooling fan. Truck accessories, um, a later style truck intake manifold. This is a lower radiator hose for a Vortec 4200. And then that is a lower radiator hose for a Vortec 2900 from a Colorado. Imagine that. Yeah, and mom's getting a lot of the brand new parts that I bought for my Fairmont, which now has a Vortec 4200 in it. So I had a brand new tensioner and a brand new water pump, and she gets to benefit from those. It's a good thing I love her. Generally just getting things wrapped up, we're also working on the power steering. This is something we've never really worked with before. We usually delete that because race car, but we are adapting the stock lines to the LS power steering pump. And then we got a power steering pressure reducing kit, which basically you take the pressure regulator out of the power steering box and you install shims and that reduces the pressure. Also waiting on a cap for the power steering. Yeah, we ordered this brand new power steering pump and it didn't come with a cap, so that was mildly annoying. But, you know, I probably should have read the description of the ad, but I didn't. Also, we got some brand new spark plug wires that mom did her all by herself. Okay. <laughs> No, I showed her how to do it on the first couple, and she did it. She did one or two, I think. But um, yeah, so these are ICT billet uh, plug wires. One mildly annoying thing with these headers is you can't use the stock style wires because they um, basically they can't get past the header. So you have to go with a uh, 45 degree boot, like what we have here. Not a big deal but you just have to be aware of it going in. Also, we got one of mommy's Christmas presents, which is the alternator and uh, vacuum booster setup. And then last but not least, the line lock solenoid for doing big smoky burnouts. I also bought that for her for Christmas. We're using a 64 Mustang brake pressure switch, as you can see here. You can see we're using uh, Deutsch connectors on the firewall. I wanted to get rid of the factory style plugs because they are not weather tight and 
there's really nothing to hold the water out and keep the pins from corroding. This is what the original wiring harness looked like. You can see it is pretty ugly and there was just no way we were going to use that on this nice of a truck. So we deleted all that and now it's all brand new wire and everything works. So let's move on to the interior. Okay. All right, so moving on to the interior, you can see we got this nice brand new seat cover. So the original seat was pretty ugly. I, I was not a fan of working around it because it was itchy and scratchy and just generally gross. So we decided to get this brand new seat cover. Also, this truck will definitely have traction control. Uh, one thing that I definitely like to add to older vehicles when we're running a Terminator X is traction control. You'd be amazed at how quick stuff can get away from you. And if mom's making a ruckus on the street, I want her to be safe. <laughs> right, mama? That's right. That's right. So um, as I mentioned in the previous episode, we are running a Holly Terminator X. You can see it hiding up there underneath the dash. We have it so that you can still see the indicator lights pointing down. And I also went through all of the original wiring and I changed everything over to the blade style fuses. The original fuse box was uh, already uh, seeing evidence of moisture and had the uh, glass style fuses. So uh, that just wasn't going to work. And uh, you know, finding fuses for them on the road can be challenging sometimes and I wanted this thing to be very reliable for my mom. Also, we had to add a bunch of extra stuff into the wiring system. So in order to do that, I wanted to get a fuse box that had a lot of extra fuses in it so that it would be easy to add additional components. You'll notice that we're also running drive-by wire. This plays into the traction control. Um, we have found that doing ignition based traction control and drive by wire based traction control has been very effective. We're actually modulating the throttle in response to tire slip. Um, it's worked pretty well in the past and I'm gonna try that out again on this truck as well. Obviously trucks are naturally going to be front heavy so there's not gonna be a ton of weight back here as it is so these tires should light up pretty easily and we need to manage that so that mom doesn't go looping around into a ditch we definitely don't want that right right <laughs> <laughs> moving on to the rear you can see there's still work happening back here we converted the truck to a uh, 55 to 56 chevy tank we could not find any tank that was specific to a 66 Ford F100. There was like tanks for like every year around the 66, but nothing for the 66. So we converted to this rear 55 to 56 Chevy style tank. We got it from tanks. Um, big fan of their products. They had the uh, internal fuel pump set up and the fuel sender already figured out. There was a whole bunch of R&D that we had to put into that. We could just literally buy the tank and drop it in, which was super nice. We're running a flex seal sensor, of course, and a Corvette style filter regulator, all PTFE fuel lines. We're using the original exhaust off of my Studebaker when it had the LS in it. Um, it's remarkable how similar the truck sounds to my Studebaker. <laughs> um, also, Dad made this really cool battery box. It houses the Optima battery perfectly. It really like hugs it very tightly. It has a uh, one inch NHRA legal uh, hold down strap. So that's about it for what's going on back here. We just found out that the drive shaft is 
complete and so mom and dad are going to go pick that up and we should be able to have this thing running in no time. So we got a lot of work done today. We're uh, really happy with the progress. We got a few things to button up. Hopefully the next time you see this truck it will be on the dyno and maybe we'll get mom to run it on the dyno. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be your first time at the dyno. Yes, it will be. Yeah. <laughs> so that should be fun. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next we'll one. See you in the next one. Perfect. Okay. Now, see this button? Push yes. on the brakes, push the button, let go of the brakes. Okay. And